Every life lost to violence is a tragedy, especially when it is the life of a young person. Every single death is one too many. We've seen a worrying rise in this violence across England and Wales. Sadly, the tragic events in London on New Year's Eve were not isolated. The first week of January also saw horrific knife attacks in Bristol, Sheffield, Oxford and Birmingham. Unfortunately, this is not new. Between 2014 and 2015, knife crime in London rose by 5%. In 2016, knife crime across England and Wales rose by 14% and by 11% in London. I'm determined to keep doing everything in my power to rise to the challenge of tackling knife crime in London. The Met's targeted operation to prevent knife crime, Operation Scepter, ran throughout last year with monthly operations. This operation uses a range of tactics such as uh, weapon sweeps, intelligence-led hotspot patrols, test purchases and proactive operations to target repeat knife crime offenders. While between November and December, the Met ran Operation Winter Nights with tough measures to tackle violent crime. It made more than 900 arrests and took more than 350 weapons off London streets, including 278 knives and 20 firearms. The Met Commissioner Cressida Dick and I agree that the Met must, the Met must continue to step up its fight against violent crime. The increased police operations means you should expect to see an increase in targeted, intelligence-led stop and search. Last year saw the biggest rollout of body-worn video anywhere in the world here in London. This is a game-changer for police accountability and should give confidence that stop and search is being used proportionately. But police will never be able to tackle crime on their own. That's why my knife crime strategy makes sure we use all the powers available at City Hall, along with our partners and communities, to tackle this hugely complex and damaging issue. The strategy, drawn up after consultation with community groups, experts, families, the police and other key partners, is made up of a wide range of both public health and criminal justice approaches, which are already underway. These include £1.4 million for services within health settings to support young victims of knife crime, extending the provision of youth workers in A&E departments to help steer those involved in knife crime away from violence, offering all schools a knife wand and a school safety officer, hosting an education summit and working with schools and anti-knife crime toolkits, an extra £625,000 for knife and gang crime projects, taking total spending to £7 million. I also launched the London Needs Your Life campaign in November using influencers that resonate with young Londoners at risk of getting caught up in knife crime. We know that in order to solve the issues of knife crime, we need a range of measures. That's why I'm coupling a tough policing response with a range of health and criminal justice interventions to divert people away and we're making a real difference on the streets of London. This includes work with mental health providers and young people involved in knife crime to address the root causes and strengthening and empowering communities to make a difference. At the same time, as a £1 billion cut to the Met Police budget, government cuts to council budgets have led to more than 30 youth centres closing since 2011, uh, uh, a real terms cut of £99 million for London schools in 2018-2019, and children's services facing a funding gap of at least £2 billion by 2020. I was able to announce yesterday an additional £49 million of funding to our police, £50 million of this will be used to boost police resources and help officers tackle knife crime. As a city chair, we're united in our quest to be tough on violent crime and its causes, but we need the government to step up as well.